Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I know that winter is indeed still upon us, but before we know it, spring is luckily here and I am just so done with these wet, dark and cold days. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for spring. Now, don't get me wrong, I've been absolutely loving my winter capsule wardrobe, so it has nothing to do with that. Like I said, I'm just so... I'm just so done with these dark days, you know? So like I do every season, I've made this planning video for you guys so that you can come along with me in my thought process. And then next week I will be sharing part two of this video, which will be the final result of my spring capsule wardrobe. So I always try to have a look back at the season that we've just gone through. Um, and then I take some notes in my capsule wardrobe planner, which is basically just a notebook. I mean, there's no need to overcomplicate that step. So in this, I just write this, the name of the season up here and then I write my thoughts, just all of the thoughts that I have. Um, and then I also write a wish list or a shopping list. And in that way, I can always go back and look for future seasons and I know that there's some wishes that I noted down last spring that I actually still am lusting over this year, so it might be the time to actually invest in those. Um, it's just a great tool to, to kind of keep track of your way of thinking all the time. So I also note down if I feel like I have been missing something, I note down if there's something that I didn't use as much as I intended, just so that next year I can maybe take better decisions based upon these thoughts. So this year I did also have a few things in my capsule wardrobe that I didn't use as much as I first intended. And one of these items were, for example, my black knee-high boots that I had been storing away for a couple of years before, finally deciding to bring them back into my wardrobe, but I think this was like the final straw. This was my final attempt to bring these boots back into my wardrobe, but I just have to face the fact that knee-high boots are not my thing. I think they are difficult, I don't think they're comfortable, and they just can't keep up with my ankle boots. So this is a lesson learned to me in the future. I probably won't go for knee-high boots because they're just not my thing. So I bought these boots a couple of years ago and I've been keeping them in my wardrobe because I kind of had this idea that, well, maybe one day I will start using them again. But even though I really like the overall outlook of these boots and I love the way you can style different outfits with these boots, I just don't find them very comfortable. So that's kind of one of the main reasons why I know that these are just not going to work. So I'm gonna see if I can sell these boots to someone who are more into them, into them than I am. Also, another thing that didn't really work out quite as planned was that I had way too many knitted jumpers in my wardrobe this time around. Um, luckily, most of them were from my storage, so it's not that I went out and bought a whole a lot of new jumpers that I didn't get any use out of. So yeah, like I said, I am all about extra knitwear for winter, but maybe just not as many next year. So in the middle of the season, I also bought a pair of secondhand Dr. Martin's Chelsea boots. I just discovered that I've been missing a pair of completely flat boots that are just as comfortable as a pair of sneakers and that can handle snow and rain and all these things that are a bit more practical, but still looks nice. Um, and my Acne Jensen boots are just not within this category. I mean, I use them all the time, but because of the heel height, they are not very practical. Um, and they've just proven to be the perfect match. I've been using them so much already. So the conclusion to my winter capsule is that I have been loving it, no doubt about that. There's not many things that I can kind of pinpoint and say that didn't work. And if we had to look at a few of my favorites, it was definitely my vintage Czech blazer that I found on ASOS Marketplace. I've been using that blazer a lot. And then also my gray blazer from Everlane, which I was gifted back in December, has been a huge favorite. And then another favorite, I mean, it's so hard to choose because I've been loving so many things. Um, my long camel coat, which I bought secondhand uh, from Another Stories, has been a huge favorite as well. And then my brown boots have you know, really not let me down either. So yeah, overall, this capsule wardrobe has just been working out super well for me and the items that are more seasonal, I'm definitely gonna store those away and then just be, be happy about being able to wear them next year. I'll just put this away. So as you guys know, I always make an inspiration board on Pinterest for the coming season. So I just pin a lot of looks that inspire me. 
a lot of specific items and then I kind of get an idea of the looks that I want to recreate the coming season. So when you scroll through my inspiration board this time around, you will quickly notice that I am kind of lusting over this more romantic, kind of French romance kind of look. Okay, does that even make any sense? So I really love when you mix more feminine items like a cute lace top together with a pair of trashy denims, for example. In general, I think these more feminine styles will suit my very classic and basic style very well. I am still head over heels for my style icon number one, Anina Bing, but this time around, I've also really fallen in love with women like the Instagrammer Audrey Lombard. I don't really know if that's how you pronounce her name, but she's just super cool. And she kind of just ticks all the boxes when it comes to this very classic and edgy style with some very romantic elements. I'm still loving this very bold red color like last year to kind of spice up all of my basic looks. And I'm also still loving leopards. So I definitely know there's some items that I've stored away from last year that I'll happily bring back out into my wardrobe. As a new thing, I also think I'm gonna mix in a bit of blush. I have a few items stored away from not last year, but the year before that, um, that I am gonna bring out this time around again, just to kind of see if I can work this more romantic style into my wardrobe. It may sound like my spring capsule is gonna have all sorts of colors, but I assure you it's not because we all know that just ain't me. I just really want to use these pops of color to kind of brighten up my otherwise very basic and monochrome looks. So I know for a fact that I can actually recreate many of the looks that I'm loving on this Pinterest board with things that I have stored away from previous seasons, so that's just awesome. So it all kind of just depends on how I style these items. And then I've also made a small shopping list for new items that I want to add to my wardrobe. And that leads me to the next step. Okay, so let's have a look at my shopping list slash wish list. I say slash because I sometimes note down things that I end up not purchasing anyway and then I'll just either ditch them because I find out that I don't really need them anyway or maybe I'll just save them for next year. So this year I have made the following list. A beige biker jacket. This is just to kind of lighten up my looks. You guys know that I love my classic black biker jacket so much and I use it a lot. I like to use it both as outerwear during the more warmer months, but also like kind of like a blazer when I'm at the office. So I've been lusting over a light version of that for quite some time. And yeah, like I said, it's just to, to kind of brighten up my looks and because I think it looks awesome together with basic t-shirts and a bread and striped top. A pair of dungarees. Now dungarees have been on my wish list for the last couple of years actually. And I don't know what it is about these. I would never wear them to the office, but for a super cozy weekend look, I would just love to hang around in a pair of dungarees, especially a vintage pair of Levi's dungarees would just be perfect. Then I have kind of been lusting over an authentic kind of banty for a while, especially with a few pops of red color or something. Um, I'm all about pairing an edgy t-shirt with a classic well-cut blazer. And uh, yeah, thanks to Anina Bing for giving me that specific look on the brain. Then I've actually also been loving kimonos for a while. Last year they were just everywhere and I think they look awesome together with a basic t-shirt and a pair of light wash jeans. So I know that kimonos are kind of a, a more of a statement piece and it wouldn't normally be something that I'd go for. But um, yeah, like I said, with, with more basic items like a plain white t-shirt and a pair of blue jeans, I think it looks awesome. Then I've been wanting to add more golden jewelry to kind of expand my collection. You guys know that I wear this set that I'm wearing right now every single day. And I've just kind of been wanting to add maybe a, another necklace, maybe another bracelet, a few different earrings, just to kind of have some more options to choose from. At the moment, I'm loving horn necklaces, for example, and I'd love to layer it together with my disc necklaces that I'm wearing today. And then I'd also like to add a pair of statement earrings to my collection, just because I think it looks super cool together with a messy bun if you have a bad hair day or if you just can't be bothered washing your hair. And then together with a well-cut blazer, a basic t-shirt and a pair of jeans, and you don't even have to apply makeup when you wear a pair of earrings like that. 
basically I would do anyway, but they just add some awesomeness to a very simple look. Then finally, I've been wanting to add a pair of dark wash Levi's jeans to my collection for a while as well. You guys know that I've been loving my light wash Levi's jeans that I bought secondhand on ASOS Marketplace a couple years back. A darker wash is just great and just as versatile and especially it looks great with like lighter denim shirts. Now, as you guys know, I always check out my secondhand possibilities before actually purchasing something new for my wardrobe. And the reason why I do this is not because I'm a saint or anything like that, but it, it's just because it aligns with my personal values. You know, you guys know that I'm very concerned about our environment and I am super interested in sustainable fashion and purchasing secondhand is one of the most sustainable ways to, to shop and to satisfy your inner fashionista. And yeah, just aligned with my personal values. I really want to be part of the movement to normalize secondhand shopping. So I always check out to see if I can find the things that I'm lusting for in secondhand versions before purchasing it. Um, and I do have a guide on how to find the things you're looking for. I'll make sure to link that one down below for you guys if you want to kind of dig into that one. I also made a vintage shopping vlog from London a few weeks back and if you saw that one you've already kind of gotten a sneak peek of the, the things that I picked up for my spring capsule during that shopping trip. So I'm not gonna show you guys what I bought today because I kind of want to keep that as a teaser. I gotta make sure you guys return to my channel, right? Um. So normally in these videos, I would use Polyward to kind of create a visual overview of my wardrobe and to put together some of the key looks that I'm going for this season. But as you know, I decided to invest in the app Cladwell not so long ago. So I decided to test out the app for this purpose as well, just to see if it works just as well for this purpose. So I found the app super helpful this time around as well, because I've been able to play around with all of the things that I have, both from my basic wardrobe and from storage from last year, and then the few new items that I kind of have been considering adding to my wardrobe and that way I could kind of picture whether an item would work or not because Cloudwell as you know comes up with a lot of different outfits and if there's just too many outfits that doesn't work with a certain item I'll just ditch it it doesn't have to be part of my wardrobe so in that way it has been super helpful I've said this a thousand times but there may be someone who doesn't know so I'm just gonna say it again I have my basic wardrobe overview this Part of my wardrobe always remains the same and it's around 80% of my wardrobe. And then I have my seasonal overview and um, the seasonals kind of fit the temperatures, it fits my mood for the season and it just kind of makes all of my basic items and the looks that I can create with these much more fresh and up to date. So I just use the seasonals to spice things up a bit and to ensure that I am never bored with my basic wardrobe. So that's how far along in the process I am. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to stay tuned for part two of this video, which is going to be a haul, a lookbook, and a final outlook of my spring capsule wardrobe. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram because I upload daily outfit inspiration in there. So I'll always share with you how I style my capsule wardrobes in there. Also, as a final thing, make sure you follow me on my blog. If you want to subscribe, you can do that via blog love and I have left a link for that down below so you'll get notified every time we write a new post. There's so many articles about sustainable fashion in general, style inspiration, capsule wardrobe guides and a whole lot of other things that I often don't even share in here so there's reason to follow me on my blog as well. I have also dedicated an entire board on Pinterest for all of my capsule wardrobe overview so you can always go back and find one that fits you and your life situation and the climate that you live in. With all that being said I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you all a wonderful day and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye guys!